Tonight's topic is solution-based financing, uh, and most people call it creative financing, and um, I call it creative financing that works. But it's always important to remember that, I, in my view, the best transactions are negotiated on a living room couch. You're going to be in front of somebody, you're going to have a physical conversation with them, they're going to be across the table from you, and you're going to have the thought process as to why they really want to sell. And what happens is, solutions, and this is what I really want people that are new to, to understand and people that are experienced to, to rethink, is that solutions are about what you want. They're not about what the seller wants. That is the most common, that's the reason that I did a presentation back some time ago that win-win is a terrible, win-win negotiations are a terrible idea. That is based on the assumption Assumption is always a tricky word, but it's based on the assumption that everybody wants a similar end goal. If you are investing in real estate and you will take the time to talk to people, you will learn that you cannot impute your idea of right and wrong, value, time, into the seller's mind. You, you can take all kinds of training that will say that your goal is to make sure everybody's happy at the end, put yourself on the other side of the table, be able to turn the documents around, everybody be good with either side of it. I, I say that all the time. I'm always good to take either side of the transaction if I finish negotiating it. That doesn't mean that the seller got everything that they want. It doesn't mean that I got everything that I want, but we could have come in with two different transactions. We could have been passing... Uh, I could have been walking down the hallway and they could have been walking down the street and I had them document out the window. I mean, you got to think in terms of the goal is you want to own the property. Their goal, you don't know. The only thing you go into when you go into a negotiation is you know you want to buy that property at some price. And once you get that in your mind, putting any other thought about what the seller's goals are in place and in thought creates all kinds of problems. So, what I, you know, the, the typical thoughts are uh, people want to sell because they want the cash, they need to move, they need to avoid foreclosure. Uh, and you're thinking in terms of what creates value. Supply and demand is what people talk about creating value, but it's strictly financing. There were 241 homes sold in Knoxville, and of the 241 homes that were sold, I am going to say that 230 of those homes sold with a mortgage of some kind. Mm -hmm. So without financing, there is no demand for housing. FHA stops lending, there is no demand. So what happens is you as investors are always needing to be aware of what's going on in the financing markets so that you can be prepared for what the future is going to look like six months, nine months out. Bill and I were having a conversation, and he defines solution-based financing, which is a term I've used for years and years, as the application of creativity and financing in buying and selling real estate. When I talk about it, I'm talking about the successful buying and selling of real estate. And where you need to think in terms of when you're having conversations with people, everybody's chasing cash, everybody's chasing uh, a, some kind of contract to get property under control. If you're having a real conversation with a seller and, they're, and you're wanting to inquire as to what's going on in their life, as to why they're selling, sometimes they'll tell you, sometimes they won't. Most of the time, if you're sincere, they will tell you exactly. So it is possible that you can trade services for a down payment. And so if you're thinking in terms of buying or selling, think in terms of what you have that the seller may want. The issue gets to be, when I talk about structure, and you think in terms of how to structure a transaction, everybody thinks in terms of no money down, you know, you, you tell me the price and I'll tell you the terms, and all the other sayings that are in the business. But when you talk to the seller of a piece of property that you're wanting to acquire, understanding what an installment, the advantage of an installment sale has for that seller so that they can provide you seller financing on their home 
is a real big deal. For you to be able to share that with them in a logical and clear way is something I will assure you 99% of the other people who knock on their door will not do. So the, the thought is that they are going to be able to sell you the property, minimize their capital gains tax, right? Receive more money today, or receive money today, and, and then finance the balance over uh, a three, four year, five year period of time, whatever number you come up with, at some interest rate, which saves, lets them defer their, they're gonna still pay their capital gains tax. They're just deferring it over time, paying less tax, and they're earning interest on the remaining balance that they're out. I can assure you, this is an important concept to understand. There is nothing creative about this. There are hundreds of pages of tax code dealing with installment sales. But I assure you, once you understand it, then you can really begin to have conversations with people about how they are going to sell their property. So what we're wanting to talk about are ways in which transactions can get done. We don't want it to be confusing. We don't want to be talking about niches of this and chasing this. We want you to think in terms of wherever you find the opportunity, you're going to get down to the negotiation of the transaction. If you do not know how to have a conversation with the people when you meet them, you will not be able to close the transaction and make money. And what I want you to think in terms of is that your goal is to pay attention, be curious, ask questions of strangers. When you ask the question, listen to what they say, and then take action based on your level of risk. And that thought process, moving through those scenarios, are what make real estate investors. 